today, we'll create a fun pop-out effect using Affinity Photo. This effect is so fun and definitely gives your photos a wow factor. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can find the exercise images in the video description. So here we have our image of the frames. We'll place our pop-out effect in this middle frame right here. Now, I don't always do this, but because I'll be working with multiple layers in this video, I want to make sure that I name the layers as we go. So I'll double click on this first layer, and I'm going to call this image Backdrop. Alright, to get started, let's bring our jumping image into this document. So I'll press Command or Control C to copy this image. Then I'll return to our backdrop image and press Command or Control V to paste it in. Now let's position this where we'd like it. I'll grab the Move tool and I'll go ahead and decrease its size and move it in place so that I can see where the frame is underneath this image. I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer. I think this would look good right here, with his head and arm popping out, and then his arm and shirt popping out over here. Maybe I'll make this a little bit larger. Alright, I'll bring the opacity back up. And now that we know where we'd like this image to sit, we're ready to set up the frame. To make sure that the image is only visible inside of the frame and we're not spilling over the sides like right now, we need to make a selection of this frame. This is actually pretty easy to do since this frame has nice straight edges. To make a selection, I'll grab the pen tool, then I'll zoom in, and I'll set down points along the outside edges of the frame. So I'll start right here and click. And then, so that I can better see how my selection is being made, I'm going to come up here and turn on Rubber Band Mode. This shows you how your points will connect together. So you can see that I'm a little bit outside of the frame, and I think that's just fine for this. It's better to be a little bit outside than a little bit inside and let the white still show. When you get to your last point, just click to connect the whole curve together, and then press Selection. So we've now made a selection of the inside of the frame. To mask this image to the selection, turn it on and make sure it's selected and then come down here and press on the mask icon. Then press Command or Control D to deselect. So this has masked everything that was inside of that selection. So now the image only appears inside of the frame. Perfect. I'm going to rename this layer by double clicking and I'll go ahead and call this Inside Frame. As you can see, it's pretty easy to mask something into a frame. I actually used this exact same technique to mask these other images into their frames. Now that we have his main body inside of the frame, the next step is to work on the area that pops out of the image. To do this, I'm going to make sure that I don't have a selection made, so if your selection is still up, make sure you press Command or Control D. Then, select the inside frame layer and press Command or Control J to duplicate it. So we now have a duplicated copy of this. I'm going to select the mask and then press Delete. Now, we need to make a selection of the model where he pops out of the frame. I'll grab the Selection Brush tool then I'll zoom in, and I'll make my brush a little bit larger using the bracket keys on my keyboard. So now I'll just paint a selection over our model.
The wrinkles on his shirt are a little tricky to select, so just take your time with it and make sure you get as much of his shirt selected as you can. Alright, with our selection made, I'm going to come up to the context toolbar and press refine. Then I'm just going to paint over the edges of his hair to tell Affinity to take a second look at those areas. It looks like it's not selecting his hair right here, so I'm going to select the foreground option to make sure that that gets added to the selection. Then I'll press apply. Notice I didn't make a selection of his legs, that's because those aren't popping out of this image. So with this selection made, I'm going to press on the mask icon, and now you can see that he's popping out of his frame. I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. Then I'm going to rename this layer, and I'll call it Outside Frame. With our pop-out image in place, it's time for some finishing touches. First, let's add a shadow behind our pop-out image. I want this shadow to be cast on the wall, not inside the image, so I'm mainly focusing on these areas that are popping out. I'm going to add a new pixel layer to put our shadow onto. To make sure that we're painting in the right area, I want to load this outside frame pixel layer as a selection. To do this, hold down command or control on your keyboard and then click and this will load the outside frame image as a selection. So with our pixel layer still selected, go ahead and grab the paintbrush tool. Using the paintbrush, I'm going to paint in black over this entire selection. Then I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. I'm going to click and drag this pixel layer beneath the outside frame layer. Then I'll grab the Move tool, and I'll go ahead and move this pixel layer by using the arrow keys on my keyboard. So looking at the way the shadows are facing down here, it looks like the lighting in this image is going downward. So I'm going to make sure to move it mostly downward for the shadow and then a little bit over so that we can see it on top. Now, I want the shadow to look a lot less harsh than this. And I think a great filter to use whenever you're adding a shadow is the box blur filter. So go over to your filters and then apply a box blur. I'm going to increase the radius until we have some nice soft edges. Then I'll close out of this and I'll select the main pixel layer again and lower the opacity until its darkness matches the darkness we have on the wall over here. All right, that's looking pretty good. The only thing I want to change is that I only want the shadow to appear on the walls, not inside our image. To remove these shadows, I want to make a selection of the inside of this frame and then remove all of those shadows. Luckily, we've already made a selection of the inside of the frame, right here on this inside frame layer. I'll hold down Command or Control and then click on this layer icon and now we have the inside of the frame loaded as a selection. So with this pixel layer still selected, I'll go ahead and grab the eraser tool, and I'll erase all of the shadow that's showing up inside of this image. You can see as I paint over, I'm not removing anything that's outside of the selection. That's the great thing about selections. It can really help you to focus in on certain areas. I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. Then I'm going to rename this pixel layer Shadow. 
To finish off this effect, let's add some glass to the frames. This is a really cool trick and it will really help to make this look more convincing. So over here, I have an image of a gallery. I imagine that our framed images are in a setting like this. I'll press Command or Control C to copy this image. Then I'll press Command or Control V to paste it in. I'm going to drag this to the top. And now I'm going to lower the opacity and grab my move tool to make sure that all of the frames are nice and covered. Now I only want this reflection to show up inside of our frames. So I want to do a simple quick selection of the frames and I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool to do this. So I'll just zoom in here and then click and drag out a rectangle to make a selection of this frame. Then I'll press add and I can do this to all of the other frames. Now, this is a really quick and not so perfect selection. Feel free to spend a little more time making these selections with the pen tool if you'd like. Next, with all of these selections made, I'm going to turn back on our reflection layer and then I'll press on the mask icon. So now we'll only have this reflection on the images. The first step to making this image look like a reflection is to change this image's blend mode to screen. Now we can see the darker areas on the layers beneath this image. You can see the dark hair of our model here and the dark red of her background starting to come through. To see our framed images even better, Let's add a levels adjustment. Go to your adjustments and then apply levels. I only want this levels adjustment to affect our frames. So I'm going to click and drag it down and to the right to apply it as a child layer. Then I can bring the black level over, which will reveal more and more of our images underneath. The darker we make this reflection image, the more it will disappear. I think this is looking really good and reflective, but the reflective image is very sharp. In reality, reflections on glass are a little fuzzier than this. So I'm going to add a Gaussian blur filter and I'm going to make sure that the Gaussian Blur filter is inside of the group by clicking and dragging it here. Then I'll double click on its icon and I'll bring the radius up to increase the blur. Now I'm going to select the whole gallery group and I'm going to lower its opacity so that we can see the images better. Okay, I'll press Command or Control D now to deselect. Right now, the reflection has a harsh edge on our subject here and on his arm and shirt. To soften this, I'm going to select the mask of our gallery image. Then I'll press B to get out our paintbrush tool. And I can paint in black with a low flow to gradually remove this harsh line from our subject. Black will just conceal this effect and I think this is looking a lot better now. The best part about this glass effect is that you can use this same technique on any image just by following these steps. We've now completed this pop out effect and learned how to add a glass effect Wow, so much knowledge. <laughs> Great work and have fun popping out of your own images. If you want to learn our affinity workflow, then check out the free course below.